The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamualaikum salam. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisan yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zidni ilma. Rabbi zidni ilma nafi'a. Rabbi zidni ilma nafi'a. Rabbi zidni ilma nafi'a. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have begun my presentation by making a dua. This dua was the dua of Sayyidina Musa alayhi sallatu salam when he went to meet Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh who was a terror, who was a dictator, who was a despot, causing a huge amount of trouble for his people. And Musa was scared. And when he was scared, remember Allah had ordered Musa alayhi salatu salam and his brother Harun saying, go to Fir'aun for he is a transgressor. Musa took his brother and he was going, but he was very scared. So scared that Allah had to tell Musa alayhi salatu salam, don't be scared, O Musa. La takhaf. Musa, don't be scared. Nothing to be scared of. Now, he made this dua. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. Now, brothers and sisters, we'll talk about this dua another time in details. Today's topic for our conversation for this particular circle is about making the best of Ramadan rather than preparing for Ramadan. Remember, preparation for Ramadan requires at least a couple of uh, months preparation, at least a month. But we now have oh, less than 10 days before Ramadan. And therefore, I can't say prepare, preparation for Ramadan would be an appropriate title. So I would call it making the best of Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, in the Quran we find Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Shahr Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran hudan lil-Nas bayinati min al-Huda wal-Furqan. Month of Ramadan is the month when Allah has revealed the Quran. And when He has revealed the Quran, He revealed the Quran as... Bayinati min al-huda wal-furqan. Huda lil-nas first. A guidance for humanity. Bayinati min al-huda. And of course, a clear uh, uh, an evidence of its own guidance. The truth of it, of the guidance itself. Wal-furqan. And a criterion by which you can judge between right and wrong. So how do we prepare for a month when such a momentous event took place in the history of humanity? When the Quran was revealed as the guide for the humanity. When the Qur'an was revealed as a criterion for humanity, when the Qur'an was revealed as a uh, healer, as a mercy of Allah, from Allah Azza wa Jal for humanity, how do we do it? Now, I want you to focus and I want you to think very deep and clearly. Qur'an, had it been revealed on the mountains, Allah says in the Qur'an, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَا رَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَذِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ and Allah gives uh, many, many examples, parables. And then he says, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلِ اللَّهِ رَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Had we revealed the Qur'an upon the mountains, the mountains would have destroyed itself into small pieces. It would have broken itself into small pieces in a sander because of the fear of Allah. The weight of the Qur'an would have been so heavy. And yet humanity has re received the Qur'an and we as believers of the Qur'an do not really take much heed of the weight of the Qur'an, the gravity of the Qur'an. What Qur'an requires us in terms of preparation, mental, physical, as well as spiritual. So let me give you a few tips for how to make the best of Ramadan. The first thing we must do is prepare for it. If you're thinking about preparing for Ramadan now, you have already missed the boat. But still, let's give you a quick summary of what you should have done in order to prepare for Ramadan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to prepare for Ramadan from two months before Ramadan. And therefore, leaving 10 days before Ramadan as a means of preparation doesn't do justice to the preparation program. But let's discuss them. Number one, preparation for Ramadan requires mental preparation. So remember, mental preparation is the first one. How do you mentally prepare? You get your mind to start thinking and you get your mind in the mode of Ramadan. Get your mind in the button that switches on the Ramadan mode. What is Ramadan mode? Telling your mind that, listen, Mr. Mind, 
I'll be eating less, I'll be drinking less, and I'll be sleeping less. Sleep deprived, food deprived, and drinks deprived. You would be saying all of that to your mind. That's mental preparation. Telling your mind to get ready for it. Number two, tell your mind that you will be spending more time in reflection, in education, and ibadat. Reflecting Allah's creation, His words. Reflection on what He has revealed. The teachings of Allah, the teachings of the Prophet of Allah Wasallam. On reflection, on educating yourself, making yourself better. And worshipping of Allah more and more and more. Tell your mind, number three, that you will focus on identifying your bad habits and personality traits and you'll be changing them. Get your mind to stop thinking like that. Tell your mind that you will not be doing anything bad anymore. You'll be identifying the bad habits and you'll be identifying the personality traits that are bad and you'll be attempting to change them. Number four, tell your mind that you'll be focusing on your character development. You'll be looking at how to develop your character better and more profoundly. That's the mental preparation. So just to summarize, mental preparation requires telling your mind that you will be eating less, drinking less, sleeping less. Telling your mind that you will be spending more time in education, in, in, in reflection and worship of Allah. You will be telling your mind that uh, you will focus on identifying your bad habits your weakness in character, and you will be changing them. Number four, you'll be telling your mind that you're focusing your culture building. So that's the mental preparation. Brothers and sisters, physical preparation, on the other hand, requires you to start getting ready for Ramadan physically. How? We all love food. We love food. Gluttony is a terrible sin, we know, but people indulge in all sorts of foods, and therefore... Food is something that you need to start taking control of. So tell and get your bodies to eat less from a month and, or two months before. Because if you suddenly stop eating, your body will react. You'll get headache, you'll get a body ache, you'll get this, you'll get that. You'll feel more tired, look more lethargic. So you should have already cut down on your food by now. You should cut down on your tea, on your coffee intake. You should cut down on your sugar intake. Or, and of course, you should cut down on, on any substance or food that you eat that is giving you extra stimulation for artificial stimulants, addictive nature. Cut them down. Reduce the intake of coffee. Reduce the intake of tea. Reduce the intake of sugary substances. Cut down on your sleep. So if you sleep 10 hours, put it down to 8 hours. Put it down to 7 hours and get ready for... More, probably six hours of sleep every day. Cut down on food. Rice, pasta, bread are heavily addictive for our body. It contains sugar. It contains carbohydrate. And when your body takes it, when you stop taking enough of it throughout the day, you'll get a headache. You'll get withdrawal symptoms. You'll get your body uh, uh, craving for it. You should have cut down on your food intake already. Cut down on rice, cut down on your pasta, cut down on your bread, cut down on your rotis, chapatis, whatever you like. Whatever food that you like, which is carbohydrate, cut it down. Cut down on your meat intake. Cut down on your uh, uh, old chicken, lamb, beef, whatever you, you like eating. Cut down on your TV watching. Cut down on your web browsing time. And cut down on your game console time. A lot of cutting down, I know. But that's the only way you can prepare for the month of Ramadan. You can't suddenly switch off. You'll get a withdrawal symptom and you'll get craving. So if you want to cut it down, start by watching less television. Stop wasting your time on internet. There is a difference between internet browsing to learn. You're going on a page and reading. You go on a page and you're reading a book or a document. Nowadays, you can read them, of course, online. I, that's not the same thing. But browsing from one hilarious video to another prank video to another video that is talking about perhaps something else, a joke or some adventure, all these adrenaline rush that you are getting, the feel-good factor that you're getting, cut them, all, cut them down because in the month of Ramadan, you will not be wasting time browsing on one video to another video. And if you do, that's the most unfortunate thing to do in the month of Ramadan. Cut down on talking rubbish. Cut down on seeing rubbish. Cut down on listening to rubbish. So cut down on what you say with your mouth. Rubbish, stop it. See what you see with your eyes, but cut down on 
seeing rubbish. Cut down on uh, listening to anyone who is speaking nonsense. And then cut down on listening to music. Music perhaps is one of the most difficult ones for a lot of people because music is very addictive, a substance that people can't get away from. If you truly want to prepare for Ramadan, you cut down on things that take you away from Allah. Take your, takes your soul away from Allah. I'm afraid majority of the 21st century modern world's music not only contains messages which are against Allah's teachings, but they're immoral, they're violent, they're sexually stimulating. They are the music that I would not allow any civilized human being to listen to, majority of the cases. I would cut them down. In fact, if I could, I'll take them out of the equation completely. So that's the physical preparation. Physical preparation, cut down on food, cut down on sleep, cut down on what you do with your time, cut down on those things. Otherwise, you will not be able to suddenly give them up in the month of Ramadan. And third preparation for Ramadan is spiritual preparation. Increase on your prayer length. So if you were praying for five minutes before, try and pray for 10 minutes. If you're praying for 10 minutes, try and pray for 15 minutes. Each prayer, prolong your prayer. Read Quran slowly. Think about what you've read slowly. Reflect on your prayer, in your prayer. Talk to Allah slowly. Elongate your prayer slightly more than you would normally do. Focus, focus, focus on your prayer. Read more Quran. Try and make some time to be able to read the Quran if you can. If you can read the Quran, Allah, my brothers and sisters, get yourself to start reading the Quran from now on rather than wait till the month of Ramadan is here. When the month of Ramadan is here, inshallah, you'll be reading the Quran, I understand. But start now. Increase a bit more, an ayah more, a couple of ayahs more, 10 minutes extra, 5 minutes extra. The more you start your body and your mind habituated to the changes that you would like to see in the month of Ramadan, the easier it would be for you to be making those ease, making those transition easy and those changes easier. Give more charity in the month of Ramadan. Of course, you'll be giving charity, but start now. Don't wait for month of Ramadan. Some of us wait for the month of Ramadan. But preparation for month of Ramadan requires spiritual preparation. And food for your soul is charity, my brothers and sisters. Food for your soul is charity, charity, charity. Start giving them now. I know in the month of Ramadan this year, most of us will be deprived of events where we would give charity. Most of us won't be able to go to our mosques where we'll be giving charity. But wallahi, my brothers and sisters, if you can start giving them now from your internet accounts, from your phone, from your... Uh, from the, on, the, on the websites by giving small amounts. Give 10 pounds, 20 pounds. Build up. Somebody called me today, asked me, sorry, yesterday, brother, can you please help me calculate my zakat? And I said to him, why do you want to calculate zakat now? He said, I want to give before Ramadan so I can give more sadaqat in the month of Ramadan. I love that spirit. Get yourself used to giving charity. Charity enables you to detach yourself from the material obsession that we all have. Detach ourselves from material love. And when you give charity, your heart will open up. You'll find Ramadan and the benefit of Ramadan easing into you. And finally, spiritual preparation requires you to change your intention. Get your intention right. Brothers and sisters, you cannot suddenly wake up on the first day of the month of Ramadan and expect to fast and get the benefit of it amazingly. You won't be able to. If you truly want to get the spirit of Ramadan and the true benefit of Ramadan, you gotta, you better, you better get your intention right from now. I will do X, Y, and Z in the month of Ramadan. Take target. Take target for yourself. Set yourself some goals. My brothers and sisters, nothing can be achieved in life without code. When I did marathon, I was told to train three to six months before. You have to train for 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K. I'm talking about kilometers here. Before you do the entire 26 miles of running, you should have done 26 miles of running in training at least a few times well before you go for the marathon run and those of us who have done marathon without preparation we can tell you it's a killer if you're not ready so get ready for Ramadan get your intention right sort of sort out your affairs in life material affairs all of those if you sort them out you'll be fine so we're prepared for Ramadan physically spiritually and most importantly mentally remember mental preparation physical preparation and spiritual preparation is essential now, how to make the best of the month of Ramadan. Let me give them to you. And inshallah, then I can open up the floor, the, the circle for everyone from wherever you are joining to ask questions, to raise your concerns, to share your thoughts, inshallah. And inshallah, we will be able to then learn from one another if that's okay with you. So here 
are the, uh, the, the, the key focus for the month of Ramadan. For me, every Ramadan, I use three C's. Three C's, my brothers and sisters. I try and contemplate more about everything that's happening to me. I try and correct everything that is around me, me, and I try and connect with the right people and right places in the month of Ramadan. So think about it. Three C's. More contemplation, more correction, and more connection. Contemplation, correction, connection. Contemplation, correction, and uh, uh, connection. Those are the three things you need to start thinking about. So focus on the month of Ramadan in your growth. Your physical growth, spiritual growth, emotional growth. What do I mean by that? So my brothers and sisters, physical growth, let me give you an example. In the month of Ramadan, you will not be eating and drinking from the early hours of the morning until the sunset. This will train you internally. If I told you something, let me, let me give you an example. If I said I'm going to go to a boot camp every year for 30 days, every year, for the last 30 years, I've been going to a boot camp for 30 days every year. You would imagine I'm a super fit person physically. A Muslim gets a spiritual boot camp every year for as long as they've been fasting. If you've been attending a, spiritually, uh, a spiritual boot camp for as long as that, why is it that we as Muslims don't find our physical, spiritual, emotional growth after Ramadan? Why is it that it is not a sustainable experience? Why is it that it doesn't stay with us even after Ramadan is over? I believe it is because we have misunderstood the concept of Ramadan. I believe it is because we have taken Ramadan in a very ritualistic sense. Everyone else is fasting, so I'm going to fast. And for some people, it is just about no eating, no drinking, and uh, um, not fulfilling their desires within those hours. Well, if that's all you have done, then say, remember this hadith of Rasulullah There are some people who get nothing out of fasting except hunger and, uh, and, and, and thirst. They get nothing out of fasting because they have not focused on their growth. So how do we grow? Let's focus on each aspect of our growth. So let's see about physical growth. Before month of Ramadan, weigh yourself on a weighing scale. If you are weighing yourself and you're weighing yourself at, say, for example, uh, um, 12 stones. Imagine you're 12 stones. Then you're not supposed to be 12 stones as far as your BMI is concerned. The doctor's advice is reduce your weight and don't be so uh, uh, overweight. So you take a target. In the month of Ramadan, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to create my physical growth possible. I will lose weight. That, therefore, I'll have more stamina. I will not be lethargic. I will not be lazy. I will not be driven by my desire to just sit around and be a couch potato. The weightier you are, more likely you will be lazy and like a couch potato. Likely. Not everyone, but weightier you are. I'm talking about being overweight disproportionately to your body. So take a target physically and you say, inshallah, let's see if I lose weight in this month of Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, if you don't lose weight in the month of Ramadan, something definitely went wrong. Every year in the month of Ramadan, I can tell you, hand on my heart, I lose weight. Why do I lose weight? It's because I cut down drastically on my food. I stop eating junk food. I stop eating rubbish food. I stop eating spicy and, and, and fried and all the oily food. I try and retain as much a, 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 a normality in healthy food as possible. So the sunnah of Rasulullah is dates and milk. My brothers and sisters, you won't believe the miracle that lies with dates and milk. Scientific research has found that uh, dates are amazing when it comes to nutrients. It contains everything that you need. Three dates, five dates, seven dates. As the sunnah goes, Rasulullah's advice, take them at iftar. Take one date even if you can't take it anymore. Take a glass of milk and then eat least amount of food, you will find yourself happy and uh, more focused on your prayer. The more food you give your body, the more it wants. Our stomach is like an elastic, it's, it's like a plastic bag. It's like an elastic bag, sorry. It expands the more food you give. The less you give, the less expansion it experiences. So slowly, slowly, your stomach size should shrink to its normal and original size. And that size is the healthy size. So cut down on your food. So if you like lots of rice, cut down on your rice. If you like lots of biryanis, cut down on your biryanis. If you like eating lots of fried food, cut down on your fried food. 
If you like eating lots of junk food, cut it down because Ramadan is the month of blessing. When uh, such blessings that are passing you by, let your physical body experience it. Allah is giving you a chance to detox your body, my brothers and sisters. Why would you deprive yourself from detoxing your body in the month of Ramadan? Cut down on food. Cut down on your sugar intake. Cut down on these things because they are dangerous for your body. Highest number of Muslims suffer from diabetes, high cholesterol, blood sugar problem, heart problem. Majority of those illnesses are food related. Rasulullah said, didn't he? That the worst vessel son of Adam could fill is his stomach. And if he cannot control himself, if he wants to keep his back straight, it is sufficient that he should eat one handful of food. But if he wants more, let him divide up his stomach into three parts and eat one third with solid, fill one third with liquid and keep one third empty. That should be your everyday practice. In the month of Ramadan, it should be even less. So physical growth requires you to understand that you could lose weight. Physical growth also requires you to take control of your eyes, what you see with your eyes physically. Walking by, you see things that you should not be looking at, look down. Try and train your eyes physically so it does not look at everything that is desirable but sinful. Remember the difference. Lots of things could be desirable, but they could be sinful. Lots of things, it could be in your mind, but you can't do them because it's a sin. So train your eyes so that you it become more in control. You are in control of your eyes. Start controlling your mouth physically so that it doesn't just blurt out anything that comes to mind. Process what's coming in your mind. Speak, but before you speak, think. I call it five seconds pause. Before you say anything, count five. One, two. Three, four, five. Then say, it gives you time to process what you're saying. Take control of your mouth. Don't say rubbish with your mouth. And take control of your ears physically. Don't listen to rubbish. Prophet said, don't listen to rubbish. Don't use your mouth for rubbish. Don't get into quarrels. If somebody comes to argue with you in the month of Ramadan, Prophet said, tell them, sorry, I'm fasting. I do not wish to engage and argue with people in the month of Ramadan. Just say, I'm fasting. It works wonderfully. Brothers and sisters, Making the best of Ramadan is about taking control of your physical growth. Physical growth from starting to lose weight to correcting your sight, your ears and your mouth. Taking control of your hands and your legs. Taking control of your entire body. Part of the growth in the month of Ramadan is you should drink a lot of water. Not during the fasting hours, but in the evening. Because you need to keep your body hydrated. Physical health of your body is essential. If you don't hydrate yourself, you will be in trouble, especially now that we've got this coronavirus, COVID-19 that is going around. The best way we can keep our bodies stronger in the month of Ramadan is to eat healthy food and lots and lots of water. Water and milk. Milk is good for your body, but water, clean water. Not fizzy drinks, not Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Tango and all the rest of the stuff that you like. Get rid of them. Throw them down your sink. Water, water, water. That's the only way you can replenish. Allah says in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ He has created humanity and all living things on this universe, in this universe, from water. We are water, 70% of our body at least. My brothers and sisters, drink healthy, eat healthy, take control of your eyes, your ears, your, and your mouth. Take control of your time. That's how you physically become prepared and that's how you make the best of the month of Ramadan by being, by growing physically, by becoming stronger. Part of physical growth in the month of Ramadan is also not um, indulging in excessive sleep. Some people will stay awake until suhoor. They go to sleep after suhoor and they will sleep all, all the way till asr. Sometimes they will miss duhr prayer. Or some people will wake up for duhr prayer and fall asleep again and then wake up at asr and fall asleep again and they will wake up for iftar. What is the point of fasting if you have spent the whole day sleeping? You should be feeling the month of Ramadan, experiencing the joys of month of Ramadan, experiencing the joys of the body, working its way in detoxing yourself from internally, your physical detox detoxification. So brothers and sisters, take control of your sleep. Sleep less. Yes. Go to sleep at the appropriate time, but wake up and without indulging in the whole days of sleep and wastefulness, make your day productive. Physical growth also requires that you spend time productively 
with your families and friends, uh, families especially now that we are all in, in a lockdown. We're going to be in our houses. It's going to be one of those weird Ramadans that they have never been before in our lifetime. Where well, we stay in our own homes, we can't go to anyone if thought, anyone's houses for iftar, we can't invite anyone for, to our houses for iftar, not even our family members. We can't go to the mosque to do taraweeh. We have to stay at home. And I've got bad news for you. We will not be able to do Eid even most likely the way things are going. COVID-19 and the lockdown has been extended for several more weeks. We don't know when it's going to be over. My brothers and sisters, is for the well-being of the entire humanity, of our society, of our country. So that's fine. We have accepted that reality. Let's make the month of Ramadan a time for physical growth. Spiritual growth in the month of Ramadan. Read more Quran, but read with reflection. Read with meaning. It is better for you to read one verse and understand the verse that you're reading than read the entire page and not understand anything. My brothers and sisters, please read the Quran and read with reflection. Read with reflection. Remember this. Read with reflection. Ah, ah. Read and reflect. Read and reflect. And you cannot do that unless you understand the meaning or read the meaning. So many sites are available. So many translations are available. In all languages under the um, sun, you can pick up any language and you can still find the meaning of the Quran available to you. No excuse in the 21st century world. Read more Quran. Reflect on the more Quran. If you start memorizing one verse a day, one verse a day, this is your spiritual growth. Memorize one verse a day with meaning. After Ramadan, 30 verses you've memorized. In 10 years, you've memorized 300 verses. That's whole of Surah Baqarah. Allahu Akbar. That's amazing, isn't it? If you had been memorizing one verse a day, 30 verse a year, for the last 10 years, you would have memorized entire Surah Al-Baqarah by now, which is almost like one and a half juz. MashaAllah. Can you imagine? You can increase it to two verses if you like. Three verses if you like. Five verses if you like. I know people who can memorize an entire page every day. 30 pages of Quran. SubhanAllah. That's a lot of pages. And that's a lot of memory. With reflection. With meaning. With understanding. Otherwise, you will not be able to correct, connect with the Quran. Remember, Quran came down as a guide to humanity. Friday Night Live. Democracy only works for those who are advocating it. It's not working. This idea is sold to the Muslim world throughout, day in and day out. If you look at the leading nation that represents democracy in the world, this is how it treats its minority. Join in the conversation with me, Abdel Akbar, and my guests every Fridays from 6 p.m. And this guidance to humanity, subhanAllah, is just amazing. Today, in my Jum'ah khutbah, I read out a poem written by a doctor called Dr. Pandit Shankar Dayal Sharma, who was the Indian president. And he wrote a poem about Muslims and their attitude to the Quran. Let me read it to you, and it will shock you at how Muslims have taken Quran and they have not understood. I'll try my best to read the Urdu or Hindi version and the translation of it. It says, Amal ki kitab ti it was a book of action. You turned it into a book of supplication. It was a book of understanding. You made it into a book of reading. Um, it was a code of, for the living. You have turned it into a manifesto for the dead. La uh, ilmo ki hat hamana dia. Uh, that which was a book of knowledge, you have abdicated to the ignorant. Uh, then, tashir i kayanat ka dars dene ayat ki sirf madrasa ki nisab banadia. It came to unveil the mysteries of the creation. You simply made it into a syllabus for your madrasas. Uh, murda. It came to give life to dead nations. You used it for seeking mercy for the dead. I, I, ye tum ne kia kia. Oh, Muslims, what have you done? When you really reflect on this verse, on this poem, he may be a Hindu gentleman, but he is a wise man. He is lamenting at the Muslim behavior of the Qur'an. 
We should read the Quran more and understand the Quran more. We should reflect on the Quran more. We should connect with the Quran more. We should connect with the words of Allah more by understanding it. Quran did not come down for the dead. It came down for the living. Quran did not come down for it to be decorated and put on the top shelf of our books and taken down when somebody dies. Quran came down for us to read, reflect and guide our lives. Quran did not come down for it to be used as a voodoo, tawbiz or any other things that we see manifestation of ignorance in our community. Quran came down to give guidance to our spiritual illnesses, to our man uh, economic illnesses, to our political illnesses, to our moral bankruptcy. We have reduced the Quran for, to a, an ornamental decorative piece that stays on top of our bookshelves and only comes down when somebody is dead. My brothers and sisters, this is a shame. So part of your spiritual preparation is to pray more, read more Quran, give more charity, connect with people, be kind to people, be generous with people. All of that shaped and informed by the Quran. And finally, emotional growth, my brothers and sisters, in the month of Ramadan, spend more time in getting your loved ones closer to you. In this month of Ramadan, when you will not be able to spend any time with them, when you will be home, pick up the phone and speak to them on the phone. Call them together, maybe a, a WhatsApp call or a Zoom call and get the families together. Express your love, your adoration, your um, the way you are missing them, the fact that you can't see them. Tell them you love them. Tell them you want to be in their company. Ask each other for forgiveness. My brothers and sisters, so many people have died out of coronavirus. And when coronavirus attacks, when you go to hospital, often you don't come back. And nobody is able to sit next to you besides your deathbed or your dying phase of your life. Nobody can be there holding your hands or reminding you of your last words of your testament. Nothing like that. You just die alone. So it is time for us to value life. I remember one of the interviewees on television a couple of days ago for the news when he said, what I've learned from coronavirus, I was a victim and I was in hospital. His family comes first. Family is the most important thing we have. My brothers and sisters, I want to finish here. I don't want to take too much of your time. Ramadan and making the best of the month of Ramadan is about connecting with ourselves. It's about correcting our behavior. It's about contemplating about our life. Ramadan is about connecting with Allah. It's about correcting our behavior towards Allah. It is about contemplating about the mercy and the wonders of Allah's creation. Month of Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, is a month to connect with our fellow human beings, our loved ones, our wives, our husbands, our children, our families, our parents, our neighbors, connecting with them, correcting our relationship. And it is about contemplating about our relationship as to how we can make it better. Brothers and sisters, in this month of Ramadan, please focus on developing and growing. Don't allow this Ramadan to be another ritualistic Ramadan. Don't allow this Ramadan to become another Ramadan when you just fast, just like everybody else is fasting. Just like you've been fasting for the last 10 years, 20 years. Did you know, my brothers and sisters, the Arabic word Ramadan actually means the scorching heat? The reason why Arabic word Ramadan comes from the root word which means scorching heat, intensity of the heat, is because it is associated with Ramadan as a time that burns away all our bad habits, our sins, our imperfections, our impurities, and it makes us closer and better human beings. Month of Ramadan is, is an opportunity to train ourselves, to gain conscience that can guard us after Ramadan is over, being Allah mindful, being conscious, attaining taqwa is the essence of the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is about becoming a better human being. Full stop. Better in your mind, better, better in your character, better in your relationship, better in your transactions, a better human being. Allah is giving you and I a chance to become better every year in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, he gives us such chances that he closes down the gates of hell, opens up the gates of heaven, ties down shaitan and opens up the last 10 days of Ramadan for us to seek absolute, absolute cleansing of all our sins. And the first 10 days and the middle 10 days and the last 10 days chunked into mercy, forgiveness and complete obsolation of all our um, a complete obliteration of all our sins, complete effacing of all of our sins. What an amazing opportunity. So my brothers and sisters, make the best of Ramadan if you can by focusing on your growth, 
on focusing on connection, correction, and com- contemplation. And finally, when Ramadan is over, carry the lessons of Ramadan for 11 months, 12 months, one year, two years to come. If you can carry the lessons of Ramadan for year, months to come, then you have truly succeeded in gaining the benefits of Ramadan. But if Ramadan goes and all bad habits comes back, they come back, then you have not gained much of Ramadan. May Allah protect us and give us the strength to be able to make the best of the month of Ramadan, to be able to prepare for the month of Ramadan and continue with the lessons of Ramadan even after. Remember, it's an extraordinary month of Ramadan. Maybe in this month of Ramadan, this year, we will be for the first time actually experiencing the true spirit of Ramadan. At the time of Rasulullah they did not have public iftar like we do. They did not have charity events like we do. They did not have TV and radio programs like we do. They did not have taraweeh like we do. They were all alone. It was complete isolation. It was like lockdown. You go to your houses and you fast. And you break your fast. You pray extra. Read more Quran. It was an isolation, time of isolation. Last 10 days of Ramadan, Rasulullah used to go into i'tiqaf. Remember, we can do the same in it now in the month of Ramadan because we are at home for the entire 30 days we could be in isolation. Our family could be in isolation. We are already in isolation. Let's make this isolation a time to do more taraweeh at home and do more tahajjud prayer at home, more Quran reading at home, more connection and correction and contemplation at home. Let this isolation, this lockdown be an opportunity to truly gain the spirit of Ramadan like the companions, like the Prophet of Allah experienced and exemplified. Instead of the pompous, ostentatious, the glitz and glamour of Ramadan that we experience every year. Let this Ramadan be a Ramadan of simplicity. Let this Ramadan be a Ramadan of quietness, ponder, pondering, contemplation, correction, connection by yourself at home maybe with your family. This will, inshallah, enable us to become better human beings. That's the purpose of Ramadan. And I hope and I pray Allah forgives me for my mistakes. I hope and I pray Allah forgives us all our, our mistakes and enables us uh, to be able to gain the best of the month of Ramadan. I'll be very happy to take any questions if anybody has. And I've been told that questions can be taken through the uh, live uh, feed that we have got here. So if I start reading some of those feeds, inshallah, I may be able to answer them. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Please use the chat function. Okay, so this is the announcement. Um, nine, uh, this is coming from. Let's see if there is any question. Um, there you go. It says, is shortening the fast allowed with the current situation? Shortening of the fast is only allowed if, um, uh, not shortening, sorry. Um, if you live in a hemisphere where the sun uh, 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 cannot be seen, or the sunrise and sunset isn't defined and you have to calculate, then you follow the nearest reasonable time. In the UK now, in April, May, is not that much um, like in June. So I don't think there is a need for shortening prayer, uh, our fast this uh, Ramadan. So my view is no. If somebody is unwell and they can't fast, then Allah has given them exemption. If you are... Uh, uh, um, Allah Azza wa Jal talks about fasting has been prescribed upon all of us except actually Shah Ramadan al that verse I read is where Allah says except those who are fasting those who are traveling um, so if you're not those who are not well and those who are traveling don't have to fast so if you're not well don't fast uh, why bother by asking about shortening it question for Ajbal if you are genuinely worried about coronavirus infection into your lungs because of dry throat is that enough reason to not fast? Look, brothers and sisters, fasting and coronavirus are not related. By you not eating, you're not going to affect your lungs. How you're going to affect your lungs is going to be by being in company of somebody who has coronavirus. So stay at home, number one. Number two, the way the coronavirus is spread is by being in social gatherings or in close proximity to somebody who is infected and you ingest their Um, infected uh, bodily liquid, including saliva, mucus, etc., through your nose or your mouth. Uh, In the month of Ramadan, if you stay at home, you're most likely to be safe. Remember, if you're not well, you don't have to fast. Simple. If you're not well, you don't have to fast. Keep yourself hydrated by drinking a lot of water in the month of Ramadan at night, not during the daytime. If you've got asthma and if you've got hay fever, 
You can take your inhaler because inhaler is not considered as a medicine. Keep yourself safe. Talk to your doctor and take medical advice before you decide on anything. But fear of coronavirus in, in itself isn't enough for us to break our fast. And coronavirus has nothing to do with fasting. Your stomach, inside your stomach, if the virus goes, the virus gets di uh, uh, dissolved by the acid. It's only when it goes to your lungs that it debilitates your lung and then you can't breathe. And when your lung collapses, all the other bodily organs start collapsing. It has nothing to do with fasting. Remember that. Um, we have another question here. Can mosques do more in teaching Muslims to reduce or better avoid visiting chicken and chip shop? Of course they can. In fact, chicken and chip shop should be all closed. In the month of Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, um, it should be closed uh, I, all the time. It is a sad indictment of our community that we eat such junk food. Um, if you want to have chicken and chips, make them at home. Those deeply fried ones, the ones that don't have good standard. I'm even doubtful about the halalness of some of those chickens. So in the month of Ramadan, avoid it. Don't make your iftar with chicken and chips that you buy from outside. You want to have chicken and chips? Make them at home. How do we pray tarawih at home? Remember, Rasulullah's time, companions did not pray tarawih in congregation. It was at the time of uh, Umar al-Khattab when he brought them all together in congregation, in one single congregation, and they were praying tarawih. So actually, the tarawih of Rasulullah was the tahajjud prayer itself. You wake up earlier than your normal time for suhoor, and you pray eight rak'ah of uh, 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 nawafil prayer, tahajjud prayer, tarawih prayer, read the Qur'an, you don't have to have a hafiz to read for you. If you don't have it from your memory, open up the Quran and read by looking at it. It is allowed for you to read from the Quran, especially when the prayer is nafil prayer. So yes, you can do your tarawih prayer. You can do them at home. You don't need to do tarawih prayer following your television. No, do not do tarawih prayer by following your television. Do tarawih prayer by reading the Quran yourself. Even if you read few surahs and you can connect with it, it's better than ritualizing Tarawih prayer. Ritualizing tarawih, tarawih prayer has been a problem for our community for too long. Muslims are well known to own most of the chicken and chip shops. Yes, eating that um, much meat is not the sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Absolutely true. Somebody responded, Jazakallahu khairan for your wonderful medical talk. Do you think that the uh, inhumane way animals are treated these days render halal meat haram? For a meat to be halal or haram, it needs to fulfill two criteria. It needs to have halal and tayyib. Tayyib is the wholesome certificate. We don't focus on wholesomeness nowadays. We just focus on the halalness of an animal. Halal is where the animal is permissible for us to eat. What about the wholesomeness of the animal? Wholesomeness means, has this animal been kept well? Has this animal been reared well? Has this animal been kept in a safe space? Has this animal been fed well? All of those things would indicate whether this animal is halal and tayyib for you. Muslims today are focusing only in halal, but they have forgotten the true essence of tayyib. And because they have forgotten the true, true, true essence of tayyib, we are now in big trouble. We are seeing a, an explosion of many illnesses that stem from terrible diet. And I would recommend you and I source our meat and know where the meat has come from. Know from the, fact, from the farm where it has come from, what food they have fed this animal, where it has been kept, how it has been read, how it has been slaughtered, and how it's come to your shop. I would like you to start studying intensively. Go to your grocers and ask them for a complete uh, foot, uh, footprint of the animal. If they can't give you the footprint, don't buy it from them. I would recommend this to you all. My brothers and sisters, it's so important that we keep our focus on this. Um, and then another question, some masjid might um, do tarawih prayer with around five people in congregation and stream on Facebook live. Can I follow uh, Jama'ah by Facebook? In my opinion, no. Prayer should be prayed at home and it is not to be followed using a uh, video link in that way. That to me doesn't constitute the real prayer, the essence of prayer as our beloved Prophet of Allah وسلم, had prayed. So I would not do that. I would pray at home. And I would pray at home from what I know. I don't have to do eight, eight, eight rakah or 20 rakah. I can pray four rakah, two rakah. I can do as many as I can. My brothers and sisters, open up the Quran for Allah's sake. Read from the last juz. Read from Surah 
feed alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al feed and just repeat those surahs you can do eight rak'ah at home you don't need to do 20 rak'ah if you don't know the quran ritualizing islam has become the biggest obstacle for muslims from using their brain everything is ritualized it's like press a button and you get it made for you it's you know walk through uh, drive through um, uh, tarawih nowadays you can even choose which imam to pray which uh, tarawih to listen to this has become a terrible thing for us we need to change our um, habit itikaf at home is allowed you don't have to pray itikaf you don't have to do itikaf in a mosque in fact itikaf at home is absolutely perfect allocate your room a, a part of your house or a room where you will be residing and you will not be coming out unless it's necessary my brothers and sisters it's a golden opportunity make the whole house an, an opportunity of itikaf do you know why we're already in isolation we're already in uh, you know restrictions we can't go out we should be staying at home why not use that time for your spiritual growth why not spend that time in growing your relationship with your family why not spend that time in contemplation why not spend that time productively i can't see a reason why you need to worry about anything else so itikaf can be performed at home it doesn't have to be outside brothers and sisters make your home the new mosque because of the new reality we are facing as soon as our masajids are open we of course will return to the mosque our mosques no problem but at this moment in time make your home your masjid without making our home our masjid we will always be dependent on a physical space outside rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said don't make your home a graveyard this is a warning and we should be aware of this rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam would pray fard prayer the obligatory prayer in the masjid and sunnah in his house he would pray tahajjud prayer in his own bedroom aisha radiyallahu anha said rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam would wake up we had such a small confined space that we did not have enough space enough space to sleep and pray so when he would go to sajda he would literally move my legs out of his way to be able to pray subhanallah he was doing it in his bedroom he could have done it in masjid an nawawi a small space for the companions to pray that allocated called the masjid of the prophet he did it he did that at home to distinguish between the mosque and your house your house is a right over you make your house a space of tahajjud prayer there are more questions here i'm guessing it is impossible um as we cannot congregate due to lockdown yes it is impossible so you should be staying at home and you should be doing whatever you can at home there is a real risk that a lockdown we will spend more time fasting in bed do you have any tips yes i have please do not spend time on your bed as much as you would um don't spend time on your bed that you could utilize productively you need sleep for 5 hours 6 hours 7 hours even 8 hours no problem sleep and when you when you wake up use it productively sign up to the programs that you have nowadays so many people are offering so many programs the quran studies this that and the other sign up to one of those learn a new language memorize the quran read the hadith study the life of the prophet study the history of the world study science study this technology get a new skill that you can don't waste your time at home do gardening look after your plants look after your children sit with them spend more time with them help them to grow with you grow together suggestions upon suggestions you cannot you cannot waste your time at, at home sleeping it in ramadan if you sleep your ramadan off you have wasted your ramadan my earlier question was um is friday juma prayer still compulsory friday juma prayer is compulsory all the time but it has been suspended for darura for necessity remember this when there is a necessity all normal rules get suspended if there is a necessity the juma prayer has been suspended so now you pray at home you pray duhr prayer not juma prayer however in your own houses if you want to do juma and you've got a few people at home your sons your daughters your wife your parents sit together somebody should give the adhan give the khutbah lead the prayer to rak'ah you can do juma at home too of course you can you can continue the spirit of juma you should be praying five daily prayers at home in congregation if you um are at home my brothers and sisters do your best to be able to make the best of the month of ramadan um there is a my earlier question what uh, what if there is only one person in the house one person in the house you do duhr prayer minimum number of people according to the scholars of hanafi background is 3 for juma 
three people you need for Jum'ah. So if you've got three people at home, your husband, your wife and your son, yalla bismillah, start your prayer. You can do your Jum'ah prayer at home as long as, of course, somebody knows how to uh, uh, lead and knows the rules of Jum'ah. You can do the khutbah in any language, not a problem. Of course, you should read the salah in Arabic. Yes, you can do Jum'ah at home if you want, but it is suspended for temporary reasons because of necessity. I'm aware the time is running out. I've got about three or four minutes to go. If you've got any more questions, this is your chance to ask. And of course, my brothers and sisters, this will be then posted on um, um, a Facebook page on my own page. I'm uh, currently broadcasting live on my Facebook page and a lot of people have joined. A lot of people have raised uh, some questions. I can only read a few. I can't read them all. I wish I could read them all, by the way. Um, if you've got any questions that you want to raise, please feel free because it is time for us to um, connect with one another. And um, it is um, a time for us to uh, find out about each other, about our well-beings, etc. So ask questions if you have. Let me see if I can read any more questions on my Facebook page that have been raised. Um, let's see, Bismillah from the top. Who has raised a question? Um, I don't suppose... Allahu Akbar. Um, it, this is a question, need answering. Let me, let me uh, read the question for you all. Bismillah. Bear with me, please, brothers and sisters. It says, this is a question that needs to be asked. Everyone I know from Facebook and the media has been to hospital, has passed away. Um, uh, but people who was diagnosed with COVID-19 uh, stayed at home are still alive. Brother Ajman Masur, please put... Yes, yes, I did say stay at home, don't go out. Uh, somebody else has raised a question. I don't suppose you will do step-by-step -step guide to making uh, kids uh, tarawih. <laughs> tarawih is no different to your normal salah. Is to raka Fatiha and in the recitation of the Quran, three verses. Um, and if you don't know three verses, Fatiha is enough. Now, I'm just looking through the questions. If there are any more questions, I'll answer. Otherwise, I'll, otherwise I'll move on. How do you per perform etikaf while the mosques are closed? I've already answered that, my brothers and sisters. Okay, so time has come for us to uh, finish our program. Can I make a quick dua with everybody? Please join me in making dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا رحم الرحيم يا كم ولا كم give us the strength to be able to prepare for Ramadan يا الله give us the strength to be able to prepare for Ramadan adequately so that we can prepare physically so that we can prepare spiritually and mentally يا رب يا رحم الرحيم يا كم ولا كم forgive us our mistakes يا الله enable us so that we can be as Good as possible in the month of Ramadan, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin. Enable us so that we can develop taqwa in the month of Ramadan, Ya Allah. So that we can become closer to you, Ya Allah. We can change our bad habits, Ya Allah. We can change our bad habits, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rahman Rahimin. And we can become better human beings, Ya Rabbi. Give us the strength to be able to refine our character, Ya Allah. We can become more generous and kind to people, more courteous with people. We can be more guarded with our tongue. We can be more guarded with our eyes and more guarded with our hearing, Ya Rahman Rahimin. يا كرم ولا كرمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار at a time of great turmoil this COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic that is taking over the whole world يا الله we ask you to اللهم إني أعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سير أسقام اللهم إني أعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سير أسقام اللهم إني أعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سير أسقام به الدعاء of, of any uh, um, uh, illnesses that like the one we have today, the pandemic that we have today. Ya Allah, protect our loved ones, safeguard our families, and those who have passed away accept their death as the death of shaheeds. Ya Allah, shuhada ya arhamur rahimin, ya akramul akramin. Protect us and give us the strength to be able to find a cure from this terrible viruses. Keep uh, this a terrible virus. Ya arhamur rahimin, enable us so that we can unite and love each other. We can stay together in our community spirit, even though we will not see one another. Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin. Have mercy on our parents and those who are not well. Give them shifa from your shifa, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Rabbi Nas, Ilhab al Ba's, as Ishfi and the Shafi, La Shifan, Illa Shifauk, Shifa Allah, Ya Radu Sakama, Ya Arhamur Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin. We ask you to help us, Ya Allah. Ya Qadi al Hajat, accept our. Uh, our hajat, ya Allah. Ya Rafi darajat ya Allah. Increase us in our uh, status, ya Allah, in our honor, ya Allah. Ya Halal Mushkilat, remove all the 
troubles and difficulties that we are facing. Ya Allah, Ya Arhamur Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin, Ya Arhamur Rahimin, Ya Shafi Al Amrad, Ya Arhamur Rahimin, please have mercy on us and give your shifa from your shifa. Give us your shifa from your shifa, Ya Allah. Rabbana, taqabbal minna inna kanta al-sami al-alim wa tuba alayna, Ya Mawlana, inna kanta al-tawab al-rahim. Bafidla subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Why not tune in to our live stream at inspirefm.org and follow and subscribe to our social media platforms at InspireFM Luton.